welcome to the second edition of Ready, Set, Grow. Here we cover various topics from gardening, farming, and everything in between. We will be teaching you how to become successful in your agricultural ventures. Today we'll be covering the different kinds of tillers to help you decide which one best suits you. I'm Melissa Ochoa and this is Ready, Set, Grow. Anytime you start a new project, you need to prepare your soil and tillers are just what you need to get started. Tillers are great for gardening and farming. They get the work done while also reducing the physical toll of weeding and planting. The main purpose of a tiller is to break the ground and prepare the soil. Tillers come in different sizes and depending on the size are able to perform different functions. A mini tiller is used when your soil has a layer that becomes a pan. You always want to break that pan to get more moisture for your plants, for your garden. Not only are these perfect for small landscaping jobs, they're convenient to use throughout the growing season. We use them on the beds themselves and then sometimes we use them for the furrows on the bottom so the weeds won't come out. We prevent you. Front tine tillers are smaller than rear tine tillers. The tines in the front help to propel the machine forward. With rear tine tillers, the engine is mounted at the front, which allows for better traction and balance during operation. These are great for maintaining large gardens. A commercial walk-behind tractor can maintain even a small farm. The front tine are pretty good. The rear tine, in my opinion, are a lot better. It has better capabilities of loosening the soil. You also control the not only the depth, but the speed. It's a lot more easier to control. Tillers like these have more than one forward gear, including reverse. The reason for having more gears is intended for how the soil is. If it's hard, you want to lower the gears. If it's not that hard, you want to pick up the gears to a little bit faster movement. The type of tiller seen here is a Grio G107D model. It has a Yamaha engine with 11.5 horsepower. This type of tiller is more commercialized and for more professional use. It is able to attach different implements to it, such as a flail mower and a rotary plow. And we can start talking about the flail mower. That's basically like the name says, a mower, but it's able to cut larger weeds, like pigweed. Sometimes the stem, you can see pigweed that is like two inches in diameter. That flail mower will chop it down. We usually use the rotary plow when, when the soil is a little too hard and the rotary plow is not going to pull you forward. It's just going to be in a way kind of drilling down and breaking the ground and breaking the hard pan that is built. Once we use the rotary plow, then we can go with the tiller and just leave it um, in a better shape for planting. Another attachment is the chipper that can be connected to the tractor. You can uh, uh, prune a tree and then you're gonna use the chipper and it's gonna turn th that branch into mulch. And then you can use that mulch in your garden to prevent the weeds from coming up or you can use that mulch to add to your compost. Now that we have covered the different types of tillers and what they're able to do, let's take a look at how tillers are being used to help out the local community. The University of Texas Rio Grande Valley has an agroecology research garden on campus. The garden is about a quarter of an acre, so students use the BCS 853 garden tiller for their agricultural needs. This tiller is unique because its handles are able to rotate at 180 degrees, which can make it both a front and a rear tine tiller. Garden manager Lindsay Richards gives us an insight into the type of work the students do at the garden. We weed in here, we tend to the soil and to the crops. We we harvest and, and a lot of times we donate to the food pantry for students to access healthy organic food. And so this is the first certified organic garden to be on a university campus in the state of Texas. And so that's something that we're really proud of and it also comes with a lot of responsibility and documentation. So everything that goes into this garden comes from a natural resource and we try to make it as healthy as possible for the environment and for the students. Another attachment worth mentioning is called a spader. This one is unique because it has shovels instead of tines. For more information, you can visit opensourceecology.org or ferraritractors.com. We just finished going over the different types of tillers. Now let's take a look at safety and maintenance. 
Before using a garden tiller, the operator should go through a preparation phase. UTRGV's Juan Regosa expresses the same sentiment. Read the manual, get familiar with all the parts in the tiller, get proper clothing, protective equipment, your steel toe boots, and also be paying attention when you're using it. Look, look around, look for pipes or, or hoses around, you don't want to uh, get into those, so just be very alert when you're using this type of equipment. Or be alert of your surroundings. Appropriate clothing and footwear is a must. Wear sturdy rustled work shoes. Do not wear loose fitting clothes because it can be caught in the moving parts of the tiller. The same also applies to any jewelry, ties, and scarves. Lindsay Richards from UTRGV understands that tiller users should take precautions when it comes to the gear they wear. The most important safety measure when using the tractor is to wear steel toe boots. Having the proper foot gear could prevent something hazardous happening. And then also having good pants on, you don't want something that's flared out, you want something that's straight-legged and something to protect your legs as well. Be aware of the area you'll be using the tiller on. Make sure to remove any stones or objects that may be caught up and thrown by the machine. Work on an area where you can maintain good footing. After filling the gas tank, close the fuel cap tightly and check the tiller for any spilled fuel and clean it up with the rag. Never fuel a running or hot engine and do not loosen the fuel cap until the engine has stopped and cooled down. A tiller should only be used in ideal weather conditions where there is good visibility. Do not operate one at night or during a foggy day. Keep the tiller at a slow speed to maintain control. You should never adjust blade height or any other adjustment to attachments when the engine is running. Regular maintenance is also important to keep your tiller in working shape. In order to get the most out of your investment in a tiller, you should keep the engine, tiller, and all attachments in safe working condition. All unit accessories should be cleaned regularly and checked for damaged or missing parts. The very common mistake is they use it, they put it on the shed, forget about it, they leave the gas on it, so the next season when they try to use it, carburetor will have some uh, build up, it's not going to work. So once you follow the recommendations on your manual, you should be in good shape to prolong the life of the tiller. Larger tillers like the BCS and the Grill model both have a power takeoff that is able to attach different implements to it. This accessory requires WD-40 to make the attachment process easier. The tillers featured on today's segment can be found at your local hardware store or online. That's all we have for today. Thank you for joining us. With Beginning Farmers and Ranchers, I'm Melissa Ochoa. Keep on growing.